everyone. I've brought you down to the Shade House just to touch base with everyone and everything that's been going on in the world. And I know it's been ages since we were down here. Um, I even neglected the Brahms myself with all the things going on. I think it was about three weeks I neglected them, just watching news and trying to keep up with everything that was happening in the world. So um, when I came down here, I couldn't believe that they were actually all fine. We did get some rain um, and that would have helped them along too. But we're in winter time here and today's quite a nice day. The sun's out and it's sort of at the um, that time of winter where you think winter's over and it's a nice spring day but really we've still got quite a few more cold wintry days to go yet and I've been wanting to get you all down here just to hope that you're all really well I know the bromeliad addicts will all be doing it really tough and I do want to do a special video dedicated to just for bromeliad addict addicts I myself am a former bromeliad addict and I've just been six months without buying a bromeliad and I've buckled I know, I've bought this one and it hasn't got a name which always irritates me. And in mind, we might be able to study it and work it out sometime. And my Pink Debbie, Neo Pink Debbie, seems to have recovered herself, which is just really amazing. And then I wanted to watch this one with you, which is... Last year we watched Purple Surprise. And it's had one beautiful big pup, lots of spots on it. Just the one, but it's a great looking pup. I know when they got lots of spots, it's a good sign. So that started out quite ordinary, sort of not even really some sort of undescribable color, sort of a gray, pinky, purple sort of brom that just didn't look fancy at all. And then it turned into this fantastic neo purple surprise with a Z. So I found out that the surprise was a convict ship that came to Australia early on. I'm not sure if that's what the purple surprise is all about, but I have found that out. And the Brom I want to watch this year it was just it was green just a couple of weeks ago so it's amazing how just when they sort of get to the right age they start to mature even though it's winter here it's almost like we're going into an early spring so this is the Brom that I want to watch so this year with you because I think it's going to change a lot so it's all about those quiet achievers you know how I was talking to you about Broms that are quiet achievers, like they start out looking nothing too fancy and then they end up being absolutely spectacular. Yeah, I've got a feeling this one is going to be one of those ones. But yeah, I'm so proud of Pink Debbie, like she's still got little burnt tips on the edge, on the outside edges, but yeah, perhaps, perhaps she wasn't burnt inside, I'm not sure. But yeah, I thought that was half grown before, but it's still got a long way to go to maturity. It's one of those slow growing ones. And also Mishy. Um, it's taken a long time, so perhaps it does need to go into the new house. So we might mark that down as one that needs to go in with more light. Some of them are looking really, really good. Victoria Pink's just only, she's only got those pink bits um, a week ago. So she's been green every week. So perhaps spring is coming early. Or the sun's changing above. That's probably what it's more about, the sun changing, coming across them. Because a lot of things where I just showed you actually up in the garden with the um, organic bromeliads, it looked very shady, but the sun does come across there, but I just didn't catch it at the right time when I was filming. So the last thing I wanted to get you down here for is just to say thank you so much to our Bromelia Club for, for doing the right thing and closing down and reacting really promptly in the pandemic, not putting you know money and, or anything like that before anything else. I think we all had such a hard time just dealing with having to go down and vote. I know I took a pen and a pencil with me because I didn't know which one. I didn't know which one we had to put on the ballot if we needed pen or pencil, but I made sure I was very prepared. So I think they've just done such a marvelous job and I know it's really hard for anybody in any specialist, whether it's bromeliad, succulents, orchids, everything like that. And especially the, the bromeliad addicts that would have been doing it so tough when everything just sort of shut down. I know a lot of people are opening up again and I just wish everyone well 
And before I go, I wanted to talk about one thing. One last thing. <laughs> uh, tag fairies. Uh, bromeliad tag fairies. So, I've been wondering myself for quite a couple of years, and some of my friends have also been wondering, and even outspoken to me, why has no one done any, or why are there not many bromeliad movies about with the names with the names of the bromeliads on them and yeah i think i just had a learning curve so i came in here the other day and i saw this tag here which says neo aussie dream oh look, that's unusual why would i not have that out of that one and i've just been trying to build beat a path into the other house <laughs> to get in there and i got in there and i found one that says classic you know classic which is one of the aussie dream ones and also while I was in there, I realized that I started to move a lot of the Aussie Dreams into the other side where there's more light because the Aussie Dreams do take more light. They're just fabulous plants like that. So anyway, I was in there and I saw this classic and it's a much smaller sort of shape. So I think that's Aussie Dream. And then I thought, well, if that's Aussie Dream, it definitely needs to go into the other side for more light. So I put that as classic in my movie. So I did tell you that I would update, so I'll probably be updating all my name movies, but I try to get them all right. But, um, and everyone knows about the run tag fairies, like, um, tags just appear, things like that. So, anyway, talk to you soon.